How's it going everybody? So in this video, I'm going to be explaining the top two most common causes of psoriasis and I'm going to be discussing a little bit about my experience healing my own psoriasis and I'm going to give some of my thoughts on the situation. So first and foremost, uh, a lot of people that get psoriasis, they'll go to doctors and doctors will prescribe all sorts of strange treatments to try to band-aid the symptoms. Uh, I've heard of people getting certain types of creams, uh, steroid creams, steroid shots, you know, like cortisone and stuff like that. Um, and a wide variety of other kind of really, let's just say not optimal, not effective type of treatments uh, to treat the symptom rather than getting addressing the root cause. And of course, there will be a lot of strange explanations from different doctors. They generally all have a different, uh, different uh, explanations for why they think uh, their patients are getting psoriasis. Uh, but in general, it's seen as an autoimmune skin disorder. And I actually struggled with psoriasis for a number of years, and I actually completely resolved it. Uh, using an elimination diet, and I'm going to get into that here in a bit. And I've actually had uh, a couple of clients who have had really good success with some of the things that I have um, worked with and experimented with and advocated in the past, okay? So I've actually gotten a number of, of uh, messages, private messages and comments from a couple of people uh, almost demanding that I start making more content on psoriasis, actually. Uh, I apparently had a couple of videos about psoriasis and how to heal it back in like 2016, which is about a year after I healed mine. But I guess that those videos are not even on the internet anymore. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna explain. So two main causes, okay? The very first cause and the simplest one to, to remedy is a deficiency in vitamin A and vitamin D, okay? And when we talk about vitamin A and vitamin D deficiency, you have to understand that vitamin A and vitamin D do work in synergy, okay? I used to be very skeptical of this before, but I am now very well versed in the research, and uh, I understand that so if you have a vitamin D deficiency, so it's actually very common for people with psoriasis to have vitamin D deficiencies, and um, they will supplement vitamin D and eventually get their blood numbers of vitamin D up to the healthy range. And so first of all, if you do, if you haven't gotten a vitamin D test, you need to get your blood checked. Get a vitamin D test get the uh, get both forms of vitamin D, the active and the inactive form tested, and make sure you supplement if you're low, okay? That's the first thing. Uh, but the second thing is that if you don't supplement vitamin A alongside the vitamin D, then your symptoms might improve a little bit, uh, but just because you have your vitamin D levels in a healthy range doesn't mean that your psoriasis is gonna go away if you are not supplementing vitamin A as well. And so what a lot of people, like a lot of people find just supplementing vitamin D when they're low actually puts their psoriasis into remission. But there's a lot of other people who, find, who have found vitamin D alone, despite being low in it, when they start supplementing and then they reverse their vitamin D uh, deficiency, they got in the healthy range, their psoriasis didn't go away, or it might have only slightly improved. But then when they add vitamin A in the form of in the form of retinol, okay, it has to be both of these have to be the active forms, okay? If you're supplementing vitamin D2, you are wasting your time and money. You need to supplement vitamin D3. Okay? I, I promise you that. Vitamin D3. Okay. Vitamin A needs to be supplemented in the form of retinol not beta quarantine. Beta quarantine is not vitamin A. It might be a, a precursor, but it's not vitamin A. If you have psoriasis and you're wasting your time with vitamin D2 and beta quarantine supplements, then you shouldn't be watching this video because you're not 
I just don't I, – I'm just going to say you're probably not the wisest person. Um, I don't want to go too deep into all of that. But um, if you have a freaking clinical issue, it requires a clinical solution. There's zero reason why you would object to taking – actual vitamin D and vitamin A supplements, okay? And just, like, get a lot of pushback from people, people that are vegan or whatever, and, you know, or they're just against supplements, and they won't even take supplements. Um, I get that a lot with, with you know. Um, so anyway, um, you need a supplement vitamin D3 and vitamin A, okay? And it wouldn't hurt to supplement vitamin K2, but vitamin K2 can have some side effects if you don't take the right form. Vitamin, vitamin K2, MK4, okay, is the type of vitamin K2 that you want to supplement if you do choose to do so. But just know to, to resolve your psoriasis, if your psoriasis is caused from a vitamin D and vitamin A deficiency, uh, the, v, the D and the A, as long as you get those supplemented in the, ad, in the adequate amounts and ratios, you should experience remission provided your psoriasis is being caused by that another thing is if you are vegan for an extended period of time uh or maybe your psoriasis started to come up when you were a child or something or when you were younger and maybe when you're younger like most people really don't have a nutritious diet you know and people don't they think eating healthy is egg whites and salad but the fact is, you know, egg whites and salad is not going to provide you the vitamin D and vitamin A you need. Egg yolks will. So people that, you know, grew up eating cereal and skim milk and whatever else, and especially if you were vegan, if you're eating a vitamin D and vitamin A deficient diet or a diet that's deficient in cholesterol and, and or saturated fat coming from your diet, it's very likely that you might have – accidentally self-induced deficiencies in these nutrients. And so let me kind of talk a little bit on saturated fat and cholesterol. So um, when I say, and I, when people say that you can undereat saturated fat and cholesterol, right? If someone suggests you might get a lot of sunlight, for example, and take vitamin D supplements, but you might not be synthesizing that vitamin D because you're not consuming enough saturated fat and cholesterol in your diet. The common opposition or rebuttal you might get is uh, that your body can create its own cholesterol endogenously inside of itself. And so you don't need to consume saturated fat and cholesterol from your diet to synthesize vitamin D, right? Because uh, the liver will actually produce um, enough cholesterol and, and whatnot from inside of itself, basically, without even eating it. And so people say, you know, people who are relatively educated in, in the mainstream consensus will say that, you know, it's bullshit to suggest you need to consume more saturated fat and cholesterol in your diet to be healthy. But the, the, the problem here is that I've actually seen a lot of case reports, uh, many that actually have medical documentation of vitamin D deficiencies um, while they were vegan eating, and their LDL on a cholesterol panel is uh, under 90 nanograms per deciliter, which is considered the healthy range, was very low. They had a very low total cholesterol level um, and so the body was producing cholesterol, but it was a very low amount. But they're eating zero cholesterol or saturated fat in their diet, and but they had a vitamin D deficiency, and they had symptoms, severe symptoms, okay? And no matter how much vitamin D, they got vi uh, tons of vitamin D supplements and, and other things from their doctor, and no matter how much they took, they couldn't reverse that deficiency. And I've actually seen vitamin A deficiencies as well, and a lot of vegans uh, who are getting most of it from beta quarantine. And maybe it's a genetic polymorphism that prevents them from converting the beta quarantine into the active retinol. But all I'm saying is um, there does seem to be a strong correlation between diets that are low in cholesterol and saturated fat 
and how much vitamin D and vitamin A you're actually able to uh, synthesize or maintain. Even if you are consuming supplements or getting enough sun or eating enough beta quarantine in your diet. So, um, you know, in my opinion, a vegan diet could very likely set people up to becoming deficient in vitamin D and vitamin A. And, you know, part of that is because you don't get a lot of that in your diet. The other part of that is a saturated fat and cholesterol kind of connection that we mostly see in people's experiences. So let's now talk about the pathways involved that could potentially be the reason why vitamin D and vitamin A could be contributing to um, psoriasis or vitamin D and vitamin A deficiency and also saturated fat and cholesterol in its, um, in its role in, in this deficiency syndrome, right? So the first thing is, um, so vitamin A, you'll see a lot of uh, nutrition textbooks list vitamin A as an essential uh, vitamin for the health of your skin and for beautiful skin, for the smoothness of your skin. And all sorts of skin disorders can actually happen when you have a vitamin A deficiency. Uh, and, and a big part of that is because vitamin A plays a vital role and the creation of uh, certain um, certain molecules involved in, in in the cells of your skin, okay. Um, and I believe like developing healthy keratin or something to that degree, but I'm I'm not really into beauty and <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, anyway, so you see a lot of um, you know Pantene Pro V and all these like uh, hair and 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 lotion and skin. Uh, uh, skin products that actually are supplemented with vitamin A because they recognize that that's been a, you know, a, a huge thing. But what people don't know is, so in, in vitamin D um, works together with vitamin A in order to create a, a variety of different um, molecules to produce healthy skin. So that's the first thing. You can have a lot of skin disorders if you don't have enough vitamin D and or vitamin A. And just because you have enough vitamin A in your diet uh, doesn't mean that you're act, it, you know, because you probably might have a vitamin D deficiency, it might not actually be working to prevent psoriasis. And I think that's a huge one that people are missing. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people insist that uh, when they supplement vitamin D and vitamin A in the right form to the right doses, eventually it goes away. And I've seen people who had psoriasis but and their doctor actually gave them vitamin D therapy because of their blood test showing they were rock bottom super low in vitamin D and without even supplementing vitamin A these people um, reverse their psoriasis on accident just because their doctor was trying to reverse the vitamin D deficiency and they found that the, the, the psoriasis went away on its own once they corrected the vitamin D deficiency coincidentally so uh, I've seen a lot of posts in different forums been a part of in, over the years. I've had friends and clients who have found this as well. So um, there's lots of videos on YouTube about this, and I'm surprised more people haven't seen these videos. So anyway, um, so that's the first thing is that vitamin D and vitamin A play a vital role just in your skin health in general, okay, for the production of healthy skin cells. The second thing is on the autoimmune side of things, um, a vitamin D and a vitamin A deficiency, and especially a vitamin A deficiency, can actually um, it can actually make you sus more susceptible to infections and uh, cause your immune system to malfunction in a variety of different ways. And so. You know, there's some people who strongly believe psoriasis and all autoimmune disorders are contributed to from an infection with Epstein-Barr virus. I'm not going to say who they are, but there's a lot of quackery, very strong quackery that can be shown and proven in those camps of people. Uh, but it is true that it's possible an infection, a viral infection could contribute. Uh, and so, you know, vitamin A and, and vitamin D are ex like directly directly involved in your susceptibility to infection, so much so that in the early 1900s, uh, cod liver oil is actually being used as a very effective remedy 
for uh, reversing all sorts of chronic infections, but predominantly infections on the outside of the body. So that means, um, you know, things like in the digestive system and the colon, you know, in the colon, uh, inside of your anus, um, in the mucul mucosal membranes, in your throat. These are technically outside the body. And of course, infections of the skin. Okay. Um, and so just keeping that in mind, um, you know, so let, so we're going to get a little bit into how um, cholesterol and saturated fat are involved. Then we're going to get into the second, number two, cause number two of the ca leading cause of psoriasis, which was my case, which was my cause. But um, so saturated fat and cholesterol are involved in psoriasis um, and mostly vitamin D and vitamin A deficiency because – um, in order to synthesize, synthesize vitamin D from the, from the sun, you need uh, – so it requires cholesterol to be um, – for the conversion once, skin, uh, once the sun hits the skin into the active form and to actually be absorbed and metabolized from the bloodstream and converted effectively into the vitamin D that we use. And so basically – uh, what can happen is so people can get a lot of sunlight and, and, you know, living in Florida or living in Texas like I do or living in California, um, people can get a lot of sun and be active and outside all the time. And uh, they can get the, you know, direct exposure, keep their shirts off and all this stuff. And the sun can hit their skin. But because they're not consuming enough cholesterol – um, they might ha they I mean it's possible that maybe those, to a certain degree that sun hitting the skin might not really do a whole lot at all might but it might actually um, absorb some of the inactive form but not actually convert over to the active form uh, be, re because cholesterol is the direct building block in that pathway in that process I don't want to get too deep into into um, that pathway in this video but um, again, there's been a lot of case reports with medical documentation because I don't wouldn't put a lot of uh, weight into anecdotes unless there was actual documentation and uh, involved. Um, where, you know, people were they had vitamin D deficiency despite having the sunlight, despite uh, taking supplements. But they also had very low total cholesterol levels and LDL. And when they started to eat a lot of saturated fat and add more cholesterol-containing foods into their diet, their cholesterol did shoot up, but so did their active form of vitamin D. And they effectively reversed the vitamin D deficiency. So, um, the, again, that has to do with cholesterol being a direct uh, building block to the synthesis of, vitamin, of active vitamin D from the sunlight hitting your skin, okay? And it's very likely that it's also involved in converting vitamin D from supplementation and maybe the absorption. I know fat-soluble nutrients don't actually require you to eat any dietary fat, right? That's kind of like a gimmick, but uh, I just think you need to do everything you possibly can to try to solve this issue. And if you're uh, on a vegan diet or you're scared of saturated fat and cholesterol, or you're one of these appeal to nature fallacy people who think if it's natural, it's healthy. So don't take supplements because they're man-made pharmaceuticals. Well, then you're probably just going to have this disease forever, you know, especially if you have like a blood, um, a blood test. It makes no, it makes zero sense at all to avoid that. So um, anyway, yeah. So take vitamin D3 D3 take uh better you know, sorry take retinol vitamin A maybe eat some liver uh and maybe eat some eggs some whole eggs with the with the yolk uh, i talk to people all the time as a personal trainer and a health consultant as well um and a and a nutritionist where people will always tell me their diet and it's extremely devoid in vitamin A vitamin D and saturated fat so it doesn't surprise me that everyone is walking around with chronic infections. They're always blaming something in the air for why they have respiratory symptoms all the time. They have autoimmune issues. They have pretty clear symptoms of vitamin D and vitamin A deficiency. 
oftentimes uh, very low bone mineral density, let alone seem to be suffering from sarcopenia despite being extremely active. And it's mostly because they're, they're eating the mainstream idea of what a healthy diet is and completely uh, m like ignoring the very nut nutrients that these foods normally contain. They're actually removing them because they think it's healthy. So, yeah. So let's move on to uh, cause number two. So the second primary cause of psoriasis uh, that I found to be the cause for me well, are actually food intolerances. And this is really more of a underlying trigger for most autoimmune conditions. So um, basically what can happen is uh, either you can be, so you could take antibiotics, right? If you take antibiotics, okay, uh, at least this was the case for me. I took like a couple rounds of antibiotics because I had a very severe, I had two severe MRSA infections. Uh, a couple months apart, actually, in 2011. And so I took a bunch of antibiotics because Immersa would have eat, eaten my skin and eat a, an entire hole inside me if I didn't take them. And basically what that can do is completely destroy all your uh, good bacteria in your intestine. And then what can happen is if you start to eat whole grains, which are foods that are almost entirely digested by fer the fermentation in, of bacteria in your intestine, uh, these foods cannot break down in your intestine without the bacteria required to digest them. So antibiotics can, can kill off that, that bacteria and cause you to not digest whole grains and plant foods and fibrous foods uh, anymore. And so for me, I started having irritable bowel syndrome symptoms that started to become way worse when I started to eat a whole grain plant-based diet in late 2012. So I was eating a plant-based diet up until I went completely vegan for a whole year from 2014 to 2015. And I started to see whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds uh, complete, uh, like, like all, like coming out of the other end in the toilet bowl the way I chewed them. And so this, um, Complete, this was happening way worse when I, the more I was eating those foods. So anyway, uh, found out, and, and, and I had psoriasis the whole time. When I removed those foods I, you know, that I was seeing in the toilet bowl that I couldn't digest um, and ate mostly meat, a little bit of non-starchy vegetables and fruit, my psoriasis completely went away and so did my irritable bowel syndrome. And I noticed potato skins was doing it, tomato skins was doing it, and blueberry skins and raisins as well. And so eventually, um, like now, I can actually digest a lot of those foods fine. But I had to stay on an elimination diet for a long time in order to get to this place. So anyway, I tried enzyme supplements, uh, probiotic supplements, none of that helped. Chewing my food a lot, uh, cooking it into congee or soup didn't help. So anyway, into mush basically. Here's the thing. When you have undigested food inside your intestine, okay, you will know, okay, there's a lot of, so basically what can happen is the undigested food in your intestine, usually it's fibrous plant foods that have a hard cellulose shell on the outside because humans can't break down cellulose for energy or for anything really. Uh, basically what can happen is the undigested food and especially fibrous foods can actually scrape, scrape and irritate your intestinal lining. And so you might not feel pain unless it starts to bleed and you get colitis. Um, but what can happen is your intestine what can, can inflame and then that's what causes you know poop that's like really, really tiny or that's tiny droplets a lot of time. It's, like, it's the inflammation of the intestinal wall. And if you think of a tube, imagine a tube Imagine the, the, the outside layer of the tube, like the, the walls of the tube, uh, thickening and thickening and thickening and expanding to where the space inside the tube becomes very, very tiny. That's what inflammation of the intestine will, ha will do. And you don't have pain because there's not a lot of pain receptors in the intestine until it starts to bleed. That can cause it. Um, but anyway, and so not only can it get inflamed like that, 
and cause problems uh, passing gas or passing uh, poop. Sorry, graphic. I know. And you think fiber helps, but a lot of people actually experience the opposite. Uh, read the book The Fiber Menace. It's very extreme and exaggerates a lot of things, but the book The Fiber Menace talks a lot about how fiber can actually have the opposite effect. And this is what I believe is happening for people who just for whatever reason have abnormal responses to these, these foods. And so anyway, what can happen is you can actually like puncture – micro tear you could tear the intestinal lining cause holes in the intestinal lining and then undigested food particles can pass undigested um, through the intestinal lining and maybe reach the bloodstream and then if it manages to um, you know exit out of the intestinal lining the way it shouldn't if it manages to get into the bloodstream some of these un undigested food particles can trigger foreign attacks for or sorry foreign it can cause your immune system to detect it as a foreign invader it can cause hives like a lot of people have chronic hives with no real trigger you know uh, root cause um, they don't know what's triggering it it can be because of this mechanism people can get lupus fibromyalgia all sorts of autoimmune conditions uh, Hashimoto's disease can be can triggered by uh, uh, intestinal lining being compromised, let's put it that way. What a lot of people call, call gut dysbiosis, right? And so, um, you know, it's not that plant foods are bad or that fiber is bad or anything like that. It's that for whatever reason, you might be having trouble digesting it. And these foods might be irritating your gut lining, causing these undigested molecules to pass the intestinal lining um, through the damaged part of the, of, the, of the intestinal lining. And then that can trigger an immune response, which can result in psoriasis, okay? Um, and, and your immune system could be attacking your skin cells uh, because uh, of this foreign invader. Like your body's not, like your immune system's not supposed to be, like it's not trained, it's not evolved to deal with this okay and so it's acting strange you know and it's most likely due to some kind of modern intervention that you it could be antibiotics it could be um you know maybe you know uh, lauren cordain's uh idea was saponins and potatoes and tomatoes it could be alkaloids in some of these plant foods. It could be a lot of things. Um, and so going on an elimination diet completely resolved it for me. And there's hundreds of thousands of people who found the same thing for their autoimmune condition as well. And you could find them if you really look for it. Um, just look up elimination diet and psoriasis or carnivore diet and psoriasis because that's a really trendy thing these days. People doing the carnivore diet to reverse their disease and they find lo and behold – Carnivores like the ultimate elimination. They eliminated some foods that probably were triggering psoriasis, and the carnivore diet somehow led to remission of psoriasis. So, it's not that that's magic. It's just an elimination diet. You know, you remove the you remove the trigger, and there's and then it goes away. So, that was kind of what worked for me. Um, but I think vitamin D and vitamin A is probably at play too. And you know, I'll, I think both things should be done. Like I've actually had um, a, you know, a client or actually just a subscriber. He wasn't a client of mine who was bedridden and on disability for a whole decade and couldn't work. And he found eating liver, which is very high in both vitamin D and vitamin A and vitamin K2 and all the active forms in very high amounts, eating four ounces of liver every single day, he was able to actually reverse his uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and then get back to work um, and come off disability. And he sent me a long, like a bunch of pictures and everything, and I made a video about it. So, yeah, I mean, you'd be surprised at what vitamin D and vitamin A uh, could do for you, right? And I think that's why a lot of people report feeling so regenerated after eating liver and stuff. It's not magic. It's just certain nutrients that you probably needed and were deficient in for a long time. So, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the majority of what I wanted to say. Um, and I, you know, there's other things out there and other ideas, but I think that 
it's pro it's probably good to, you know, maybe experiment with elimination diet, um, especially the way I did. Remove, you know, I think removing beans, nuts and seeds, whole grains, legumes, uh, and remember that cacao is a legume. Um, and then also being mindful of certain foods that you think might be triggering it. You know, eating mostly red meat, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, broccoli, cauliflower, and some other kind of easy to digest foods that are cooked. You need to cook these foods. If you're eating a lot of raw plant foods and then you're one and you're having problems, I mean it doesn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me. You should really cook them and cook them and cook them. And just stay away from the, the grains, nuts and seeds and beans for a while and see what happens. And 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 try to eat liver. You know, supplement with the active forms of vitamin D and vitamin A the way I was mentioning it. And uh, go on the elimination diet and try to base your diet on red meat if you can. Maybe eat a little bit of butter maybe. And just – and some egg yolks and see what happens, you know. Um, give, But you have to give yourself four weeks or so to, to see if you notice anything. Especially because vitamin D and vitamin A take some time to build up. And, uh, you know, take blood work. See if your vitamin D levels go back in the healthy range, you know, and uh, yeah. But if you really want to go full ham and you want to go 100% into something to really just give it your all for four weeks and see if it helps, try a carnivore diet with liver and butter, okay? And take, um, you know, take maybe since you're eating liver, like a low dose of vitamin D and vitamin A. I bet you if you're eating liver – and butter, and you're eating egg yolks every day and meat. I bet you all of your uh, these problems go away on their own without even needing a supplement. So, and then slowly add back fruit, and then slowly add back tubers, and then kind of go from there. Keep a food diary and log your experience. Um, yeah. So, leave your question in the comments down below. I, I'm probably going to start to eat a, a – I'm going to start to go ham with the egg yolks and the liver here in a bit. And I'm going to do an experiment probably. Yeah, talk to you all. Uh, comment down below and let me know what your experience has been with psoriasis. Let me know if you're suffering with it. Let me know if you're, if you're kind of skeptical. Let me know, um, you know if you're kind of afraid of some of the things I said. And uh, let me know what, what's worked for you and what's not worked for you. And uh, and kind of how you you know how your story with psoriasis. I want to know. Tell me what uh, what how you've been with that. And I'll talk to y'all next time.